what's the team done before and what's the tokenomics. And those things, I think, are pretty darn big. I think it's going to be the biggest token generation event uh, of uh, all time. So that is what we got for today. And uh, that is it. So look, thanks so much for stopping by. There's Chloe. Really shouldn't have gone in the pool, Chloe. But that's okay. Go ahead. Off you go. And that's it for today. So look, thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Uh, we're going to do the Q&A. If you got to go, it's Sunday. Spend time with the family. Get outside. It's a beautiful day, wherever you're at. I mean, it's beautiful here. I don't know where you're at. But uh, if you want to stick around, we're going to do the Q&A right now. And I'll answer all your burning questions to the best of my abilities. And that's it. So thanks so much for stopping. I do appreciate it. And then I'll see you on the next one. Now, let's get to a little Q&A. Ah. <laughs> nice green screen work. You're an amazing video. You got to tell me. Me and uh, Zach King. Let's see. What coin? Oh, so Crypto Investing says, what coin is that? That is a coin called uh, Sweatcoin. If you look in the description, uh, it's like at the very top. It says there's a place to download it. And you can download the app. It's, uh, it's for Apple and iOS. And it's the official link, so you don't worry about getting scammed. And again, it's, uh, it's free to use, and it just counts your, your steps. That's it. And then it gives you, I think it's like every thousand steps, you get like a sweat token or something like that. It always changes, I'm not for sure. And Torig says, yes, Sweatcoin will launch on Near Protocol. Matter of fact, when I go to Consensus next week, if you're in Consensus in Austin, stop by. I'll be there somewhere. Uh, there's like a, like a, they're going to have like a meet and greet. I'm going to go meet those guys. The Near Protocol guys and uh, Sweatcoin. I mean, shoot, I've been talking about them forever. I should, I mean, forever. That's a, it's a month, but I do like what they're doing. <laughs> yes, Alec, that cone is anti The cone on Chloe's head is very anti streamline. She's had surgery, had to take this big nodule out of her eyelid. Ugh. Jeff asks, Are you missing Puerto Rico? Yes. Yes, I am. And between us, the thing that I like about Puerto Rico is that the people that are there, they're like me. They don't really have a job. They just like, you know, they work online or they work remotely or whatever else. It's awesome, right? All my friends here, they all work like the, 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 the nine to five hard workers, you know, teachers, construction. I mean, those are the guys, you know, those are my friends. Fortunately, they're working all the time and, and I'm not. And I'm like, you know, you guys want to do something today? Like I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. That part sucks. So, that's why I like this channel. I'm trying to get more people to not have to work a nine to five. So I have more people to hang out with. I'm just selfish. That's what it comes down to. Great question. Rob, would you sell alts in this market or which wouldn't you? I've already sold some alts. Uh, sold some alts before. And remember, I talked about taking profits. I mean that. And uh, I'm trying to hit those strides. Actually, I talked to Mullet and I said, Mullet, you got to remind me. I'll remind you, you remind me, and I'll remind everybody that to take the profits. When you're in profit, at some point you want to take it. And this is not financial advice, but if you doubled your investment, why wouldn't you take that initial investment out and let the rest ride? It's just like, you know, house money. That's, that's one way. Or what worked out pretty well for me, if you look in the description, there's this thing called um, exit strategy. And you can see like where I thought, I thought Bitcoin would go to 150K. Hint, it did not. I thought Ethereum would go to 10K, did not. But uh, there was certain points along the road where like at 20,000, I took 20% profits. And then at, I don't remember, 40,000, I took another 20% and so down the line. And the same thing with Ethereum, and the same thing with Card Cardano was, was a good one because uh, I predicted to go to three bucks and it was just a guess and it worked out. So the problem was, was that I didn't take as much profits as I should because I got greedy like I think a lot of us did. And I will not let that happen yet again. I say that now, but that's why, that's why I like this channel because it keeps me accountable. <laughs> James, is lo James loves Solana. Hey, whatever. James loves Solana. I love Cardano. I mean, it's not, <laughs> not going to change. That's, that's how it goes. Uh, first of all, it sounds very weird when a decentralized exchange has a chairman. It just sounds weird. I mean, decentralized exchange, a decentralized project. Like here's our CEO and here's this. It just seems weird. But I mean, a lot of them do. There's just nothing wrong with that. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. I got to take a look and and see what uh, who this Drew gentleman is. I have no idea. Darky Burgesson nailed it because Rob dollars are trash and you can never take profit in Joe I got to tell you between us, I said this before. Uh, if you ever wanted to like hide a transaction, cash is king. I'm just letting you know. If I had thousand bucks and I wanted to buy your really beat up ATV, I could buy, I could just, here's the cash. ATV comes to me. Who's going to know? If I bought it with Bitcoin, who's going to know? Well, everybody who understands on-chain analysis will know that that is. So I never understood that whole thing about it's used for illicit activities. I would never use crypto to buy whatever. Uh, yeah, Alice says, whoops, gold. Sweat doesn't really work well with the products you can buy. Sweat doesn't, the, the app works great. It's just that they have... They have things that early I don't really, really get into. That's why, like, if you if you ever heard of StormX, that's a great app. And uh, Simon said it right. It's a um, it's a recession proof app because the more StormX that you hold, the bigger discounts you get on household items. And he's and I know he talked about bringing in the fold to Amazon. So like when they do that, we'll be using it even more. <laughs> James will be new soon. When is guy coming back? I don't know. Guy's kind of busy. Guy over at Coin Bureau was on DCA. It was great. Because uh, people always get like, they always say, oh, Guy's just, he works for this media company and he's an actor and da, da, da. So I, uh, you know, I, I went to, to London uh, last month and I spoke at his event and we were talking before, uh, before the event was going on. And he knows a ton of stuff about crypto. And the reason is because he's been investing since 2014. So uh, Guy from Coin Bureau, everybody says an actor, has been investing longer than I have and has gone through more bear markets than I have. And because of all the things he talks about, knows way more than me. That's why his channel is pretty good. So uh, when's he coming back? The answer, I, I don't know. Like I said, he's pretty busy. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you got here downtown. Cornucopias, another great um, metaverse. I think it's played earn game on built on Cardano. I saw some of the some of the gameplay and I believe it's built on the unreal engine and it looks pretty amazing. We'll see how it works out. I miss the, uh, the land mint. I just, there's so many things going on, but I got to tell you in this point, I know we're all kind of depressed, not depressed, but we're kind of like, boy, I wish there was a bear, a bull market. I'm not really me, but in the bear market is when everything starts to get built because you don't have to, you don't have to like bow down to everybody. It's just things get done. There's not so much noise. And that's why you're going to see all these projects just, you know, 10x, not in price, but, but the output, what they do. I remember in 2017 and 2018, there was no utility, really. We just thought it was the next greatest thing. And it really, it is, but they didn't really do so much. Uh, okay. So VGX Rob, great name. How good of an opportunity to think buying into Navigators right now for the VLP, VLP since you can still get it for 20K now I'll be grandfathered in prior to going to 20K or not. Look, I've been a Navigator, which is, uh, I believe, the highest tier for quite some time. And the thing is, you have to, you have to think about that because to go from, I don't know where you're at, Rob, if you're like, if you have 10,000 tokens or 5,000 tokens or 100 tokens of Voyager, to get all the way up to, to the 20,000, because you want to get to, this is what he's talking about. Let me show you. This is making no sense. I'm doing a very poor job of explaining myself. Okay. So the navigator level for, for the loyalty program, it used to be 20,000 VGX tokens, 20,000. Now it's 25,000. However, this loyalty program gets rolled out in segments over the next couple of months. So they're saying, if you get to the 20,000 navigator level, we will bump you up to the 25,000 level, not give you the tokens, but pump you up to where... Instead of getting 4x in crypto back, you get 6x. The annual percent reward is the same. Annual, preferred annual percentage, another one. Uh, annual boost goes up a quarter. Crypto, wow, that's pretty nice. 2% to 3%, that is pretty good. 85 for referrals, 100 for referrals. And then you get 
it's the same thing down here. So the thing is like, you got to think to yourself, like really this, this goes back to what I was talking about before, as far as pausing the DCA. What if, what if Rob, what if it comes out, the CPI numbers are like, yeah, inflation's not slowing down. It's actually accelerating. And then what'll happen? It, the market will probably dip down. So the price for Voyager, which I will look up right now. Voyager, number 164, that's really, is 90 cents. Okay, so what's the chances, let's see what's done over 90 days. What's the chances it doesn't go, geez, those are two depth, that's pretty good. What's the chances it doesn't go, it, it drops to 80 cents, 70 cents, 60 cents, I don't know. Time will tell, but I got to tell you, I, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of bumpy volatility along the way. So I wouldn't do that. Me personally, I wouldn't do it right now until those numbers come out. If you can, that's why I, when the numbers come out for CPI and they say, "Good news, inflation has gone down. CPI numbers are looking pretty positive." I will stick in my DC my uh, my DC orders. And I'll save them up from the last five days and stick them right in that day. Because I go, if it's a positive uh, news output, don't think it is, then of course I'm like, great, buy right now. Because I know as time goes on, it'll go up. If it's not, then I just wait a little bit longer for the news to come out and people go, oh my God, the sky is falling. And then they start to sell off. And then I just put my DC order in later in the day. So sure. So for you, I, for that one, I'd wait. But for me personally, since I use Voyager all the time, for me, it only makes sense to get to that high tier, which I'm already at, so I'm pretty happy. Hope that answered your, your question. Okay. Ben D seeing Ada dot and H bar. Just remember it could go, like remember, I was, I was watching a guy's video. He's talking about, there's a great video from Guy over Coin Bureau. He talks about the, uh, I think it was like the 10 mistakes in the bear market. One of them is statistically, I, I did a poll myself and most of the people who watch my channel, they just got in 2021 or 2020. And you guys don't realize how low prices go. I mean, you think this is bad. Just, I mean, potentially just wait, it could go down even lower. And that's the big thing. It might not, but if it does, it could go down very fast. Like, you know, I remember when Cardano hit a dollar in 2017 and everybody's like, this is great. And then it went down to like a nickel. So 95% drops are, are not the thing. So the thing is, if you're going to DCA, just be cautious and um, go slow right now if you have to. Or if, you're, if, you think, if you're on the mindset of like uh, ben, ben Cowan over at uh, Into the Cryptoverse, uh, he believes that we got a long way to go down. But that's why I, I do what's called micro DCAing now. <laughs> I'm just hedging my bet again. And instead of buying every single day on these specific L1s, I buy, uh, I buy one, one on Sunday. And then the next Sunday, I buy another one. And I just kind of flip-flop. But Bitcoin, I buy every day. So that's it. All right. Yeah. Did you sell your 2.0 on Voyager? Yes. Yeah. I sold my loan in 2.0 on Voyager. And I, and I bought Bitcoin immediately. I don't know, Charles. Is there a vote in Congress on legislation this Tuesday? Things like, like there's a vote all the time, but there is a big, a big bill being put forth by Wyoming Senator uh, Senator Lummis, and it's supposed to be pretty comprehensive as far as crypto. I need to do a, a very deep dive look into that and then report on it. So we'll. But I know it's supposed to be. I mean, if you know anything about Senator Lummis, she's very pro crypto. So this should be a pretty good one, and I'm sure she's got some great input. So yeah. I got to find it though. I got to find it. Uh, nope. Green from Germany. Sports. French Open's on. I know who won the men's final. And I think uh, NBA finals are also this weekend. There was a UFC fight last night. That's all I know. <laughs> uh, what this guy rob says i had ten thousand tokens on friday bought ten thousand more to get navigator right then and there it's no day for what this was like it's already done 
That's all you can do. What about Puerto Rico? What about Puerto Rico? Did you leave? No, we live in Puerto Rico and we vacation in Texas. I try to tell people, I got to make that a little bit more clear. So the thing with Puerto Rico is like, yeah, we live there, live there, but we have to come back because we have real estate issues that we have to take care of, tenants that we have to check on, compliance paperwork for the city. The sports complex has to be totally upgraded and we're working with uh, the engineers now. So we just, we're just here to work. I mean, we say it's a vacation, but it's, that's all we really do, it seems like. So this is a great question. Hey, Rob, you buying any Tron? You know who was big on Tron? And we talked about this yesterday. Peter McCormick from What Bitcoin Did. Not that he was big on it. He just, he just thought it was very positive that stable coins that are being, it was either him or Lynn Alden talked about how great it was that, that Tron, uh, the, the, the project itself, and if you know anything about uh, Peter McCormick, he is not, he is not uh, very um, cheery on any kind of alternative altcoins. But he'd say, hey, Tron, Tron is great because it allows stable coins to be produced and it's very cheap for transactions and people in third world countries, they can uh, hold up the value of, of, uh, of their uh, income that they have. And he gave a couple of examples like Turkey with its 73% uh, inflation right now, the Turkey Lira and Venezuela and all the different places. So it was interesting. And um, I will say this, uh, Tron has quite a bad rap, mostly because of Justin's, not because Justin, Justin Sun's a very smart guy, but he always does some interesting things. And I haven't, I haven't owned Tron since 2017, honestly, that's it. Ben Cowan is great. Love his channel. Hope he gets better soon. Been coughing all over the place. I watched his video and <laughs> he was coughing, coughing, coughing. That's why we that's why we we benched Ben for a little bit and brought on Guy for this week because for DCA, because I was like, you need a break, Ben. I know, I know it. Because I'm the same way. And when I get sick, I just drive and push and push and I get even sicker. So George always says Tron is sketchy. Tron is a little sketchy, but what isn't? Let's be honest. <sighs> but I will tell you, I mean, look, as far as stable coins go, seems to be working out okay. Now I'm not endorsing Tron or the stable coin. I personally only use USDC. If I have to, I will use uh, Tether, but I hate it. Not that I hate it. I just don't like using it because it always just feels a little weird to me. So I just use USDC because I know it's back to... Uh, one to one, and I'll take that. And I think that's it. Uh, did I miss anything? Did I miss any questions? Hold on. All right. Uh, <laughs> everything is sketchy right now. Yeah, trust nobody. Everybody and everything is a scam until proven otherwise. If you remember that, you'll probably be a lot happier in the long run. Do you see central bank digital currency as a threat to Bitcoin and crypto? The only way it works, and it won't work like this, and this is what uh, Giancarlo was talking about. He's the former head of the CFTC. He talked about how the digital dollar, CBDC, could be great if it had the ability for private transactions. And I thought that was very interesting. Because he said, he goes, there's two different ways to look at CBDCs. One is the Chinese way with the digital yuan, which everything is pretty much regimented and watched over by Big Brother, which is the government, and they can shut you down. And the other one is the only way to compete with something like that, or one of the big ways, is to make transactions private. And to do that, you'd need like the digital dollar to make it private. Now, we are not going to believe that story. None of us will. Most of us won't. And we'll be like, that's BS because there's no way the government and da, da, da. But for the masses out there, they'll be like, that sounds pretty good. And they'll go for it. So is it a, is it a threat to Bitcoin and crypto? I think if you, if you look at, if you look at Bitcoin as just pure transaction, then, then yeah, but I don't, I've never seen Bitcoin. Well, I haven't seen Bitcoin as like, a, as like a transaction layer layer since 2017. Even, even when we do have lightning and it works great, I understand it works great, but I really do see it as more of like a protocol 
Bitcoin is a, is a base layer protocol and it is the most secure computerized network in the entire planet. And if you can build things on top of that, I think that's where the real power comes from. And that's why we, we put so much electricity into it. And then of course, if you want to call it gold 2.0, I mean, even look, watch that, w go watch what Bitcoin did with Lynn Alden and Peter McCormick. And even they say, well, even, yeah, even, even uh, Peter said, look, he goes, I'm a Bitcoin maxi, maximalist, but I can't justify having people in third world countries put all their uh, economic energy into just Bitcoin as it fluctuates. And Lynn even, she piggybacked on him and said, if you make a hundred bucks a month and you know, over that month it goes down 15%, uh, you can't do that with Bitcoin. That's why stable coins, and it made a lot of sense. So do I think CB is a threat to Bitcoin and crypto? No, not so much. And I don't, and here's another thing. That's why, that's why I personally believe that you can't do everything with Bitcoin. You need other stuff that can actually do it. Like, you know, little smart contracts, little DeFi, if you want to do NFTs and stuff like that. Of course, you can build on top of Bitcoin, but that hasn't, uh, well, that's not true. CityCoin is a smart contract built on top of Bitcoin. So, uh, but I see there's a lot, there's more room for everybody. Hope that uh, was a long answer. Hope I answered you. Uh, Jeff keeps asking me about Epic Cash, and I know I will not probably do a deep dive into that because I've got 30 other ones to do. <laughs> Charky says, I'm waiting for the day when people stop talking about a dollar. Really like, great day. Yeah, imagine everything was in, I don't know, Tron. <laughs> I mean, who knows? That'd be interesting. So Jack says, Jack, you must have came in late. What's happening Friday at 6.45 a.m.? So on Friday at uh, 6.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time or 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when the CPI numbers are going to be released. And if those CPI numbers get released, then it shows that inflation is uh, out of control or increasing. It's going to drop the market because we know then that the Fed Reserve will either stick with that 0.5 basis points or they might even increase it because they need to get it under control. I know people say that they can't, but they're going to do their damnedest, I think, to do it. And uh, that could mean, Rook, what would you rather do if you're the Federal Reserve and you missed the opportunity? Would you rather crash the market and put it into recession or go a little bit slower and put it into a depression? Which one do you want to do? All right. Uh, now... No. Oh, great question. Echoes from above. I saw your video today, man. The great stuff. Do you own any NFTs? Yes. This is going to sound funny. There is this, well, I own a couple. Uh, one is uh, Wild Warriors, I think it is, on Cardano and uh, Cardano Combat. And I got a couple other ones. I got a lot of NFTs that are metaverse land, like uh, the Central Land and. Uh, Sandbox, and um, oh, what is the other one? Everdome, and uh, into the crypt and cryptoverse. Not Ben's thing, but it's uh, the Chain Guardians guys. And there's another one that I love their community, and it's going to be funny, but it's it's the greatest. It's called These Nuts, These Nuts, and they. For, first of all, they do a lot of things for testicular cancer. And, they, and then they got this, uh, this other one called Ladies, and they help with breast cancer, and they've already donated like $100,000 to these type of things. They're going to have an online casino, which in America we really can't talk about too much because, you know, protect me harder, Gary. And they're going to do more of NFT type of plays and DeFi and stuff like that. And they've also got a very big uh, ambassador crew coming out, very famous people, so we'll see. But... If you've ever, if you want, if you're ever down in the dumps, uh, go find these nuts on Twitter and go to their Discord or go to their uh, Telegram. It's hilarious. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, man. Yeah, CPI numbers. It only makes sense though, right? Only money. Can Doge raise anytime soon? Maybe. Elon Musk is a big believer. Yes, exactly. 
I'm still waiting for my t-shirt from the guys. Now that would be great. Yeah. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. It's Sunday. Let's get out there. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful day. So I'm going to take off. Remember, like I talked about in the very beginning, just think of the bear market as like we're all out of shape. We're fat and we can't see our toes. So now it's time to get back in shape. And the way we do that, just think of like the bear market as like this regimented one to two year workout plan. And uh, at, the end of the, at the end of this time frame, maybe we see our six pack abs and we have bulging biceps and glutes and all these things uh, because we put in the hard work. And I think as time goes on, you'll appreciate these bear markets as much as I do. And that's it. So look, everybody, I want to say thanks again for stopping by. I do appreciate it. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are very time sensitive, like things we just said. And that's it. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks so much. And I'll see you on the next one.